Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another one. And you can see I am with a very dear friend. Not that he's that expensive, but yeah, my good not, mate, Chris. Not old either. And not old either. And we're just making a few preparations for sailing across the lock to Coney Island, where we're going to set up a a wild camp and uh, do a few bits and bobs. But if we manage to make it over to the island, I'll continue the vlog. If not, <laughs> it'll be a very quick vlog. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll I'm sure we'll make it. Yeah. What do you think? Will I... Yeah, yeah, as long as you can swim. Yeah uh, yes, I can swim, I remembered. It's been a while. So we'll see us en route. Or if anything strange or wonderful happens in between, I'll let you know. Actually not a bad day. Yeah. Those are geese you hear in the background. They sound very human-like, but they're actually a gaggle of geese laughing and cohorting. It's nice being chauffeured along here, so it is, I must say. Yeah, pull your weight, Wilson. How you doing there? You doing all right? There's always a slacker on the boat. <laughs> As long as we look gorgeous. Yes, I was just wondering. We'll look good. We'll, we'll go for the windswept and interesting, will we? Windswept and interesting. <laughs> it's actually it's not a it's not a big wind, but there's a bit of a, a nice yeah, breeze, you know. Yeah, it's tipped there a wee bit, so. I suppose I better give you a hand, will I? Um, yeah, we'll probably need to go in through these weeds, or we can just paddle out. You're doing a great job. Keep it going. So just get us. If we get straight into these waves, it makes life a bit easier. Right, I can't slack the whole trip. I'll have to give you a hand here. <laughs> so, uh, an hour and 20 minutes later, you can see the, the mainland directly behind us. They still haven't done a bit of paddling. <laughs> <laughs> and we're now at Coney Island. We're just going to skirt round, do we reconnoiter? Have a little look round. Chris, you reckon there's a wee spot on the other side, yeah? Yeah, there's a nice wee jetty. Excellent. Away from the kind of picnic spot. Away from the madding crowd. Just we're going to some trouble for a picnic, aren't we? Some trouble for a picnic. But the good thing is about a boat is you can drink and drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can see the mainland behind us there. So that's, I don't know, six, seven miles, you know, so not bad, not bad going. Talk to it, talk to it. The nose just goes. <laughs> so we've just arrived at the jetty on the other side of Coney Island. Uh, Chris assures me it's not too far to the pitch, so. <laughs> what a rather pleasant day. <laughs> you can face a spine right back. As it like you did, you had like funny ears over your head, eh? Well, sure you have, you can tell you're stepping it. Get the stuff off without submerging ourselves. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I'm nearly in. Well, just have a quick look up here. Very nice indeed. Turn, turn right at the first tree. Not a grand wee spot, but time enough for that in a minute or two. Let's get things squared away.
corn on the cob simmering away nicely in the billy can there. What are you looking like, Chris? Looking boiling. Boiling, excellent. And I have a, an onion on the pan here. Just letting them fry up a bit before we stick in the two humongous, I must say, humongous sirloin steaks from Mickey Blue Eyes out of work. Cheers, Mickey Blue. Appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. And um, if they taste any way as good as they look, then we'll be happy campers. We're already happy campers. We're already happy campers. It's Chris on the, the JD. And we're going rightly. Such a beautiful evening here in Coney Island on Loch Ness. There's not a breath of wind now. The midges, for the most part, there was a, a bit of an aerial assault earlier, but they seem to have picked off, which is good. And I don't know if the GoPro picked it up, but through the tree line there you can see the remnants of a beautiful sunset. And of course the canoe in the foreground. Well, yeah, so far so good. Happy days. <laughs> they are fucking class. He says, do you want big ones or wee ones? I says, oh, sort of medium size. I'll get you a big one. <laughs> it's like, why, why did you even ask? Do you want big ones or do you want big ones? Wow. That's serious, isn't it? Isn't it? That's a queer hunk of meat, boys. That is a queer hunk of meat. <laughs> uh, the big pan mightn't be that big. Yeah, see what you mean? Bernie, very Bernie. I can just look them off a wee second. If you see if you just leave that sitting there, just click on. The heat of the, pat, the, the, heat of the um, cast iron, just, um, we'll just keep on cooking those. Keep you can even just leave it off. That'll do. So you can even just leave it off the heat. All together? Yeah, yeah, and they're, they're just sizzling away, sizzling away. Because it, 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 it does get very hot in the oil. Oh. Yeah. I just don't want them completely burnt, you know? Yeah. You find they'll just sizzle away on them, I think. But that's down to bed. Yeah, Ben has a lot of cast iron skillets and pans and... One big bad boy on. Put this one over the other side. Looks like Mickey Blue. <laughs> I'll use the big pan and they're still not even fitting in. <laughs> what are those corns like? I haven't found one yet. Let me throw a dime to them and find the bacon myself. Yeah, good thinking. You're a long way from all these. That's true. That's very true. Oh, just got a lovely whiff there of onion and sort of a, a garlicky sort of hint to it. Mm. Lovely jubbly. Coming on nicely. And a few uh, Jack Daniels for later. There's no way the GoPro's going to pick up the silvery slither of the moon. Let me try and get that later on a little star lapse or night lapse.
Yeah, it's coming on nicely. Have a look on their side of here. Oh yes. Right, so grab a few veggies there. Those look particularly epic. There's a steak done to perfection. What I will do is, I'll put that bad boy on my plate. So I've got wrapped in onions. There we go. A few veggies. And mange tout. <laughs> And Chris, if you'd be so nice as to give me a small top up of uh, JD. Perfect. Excellent. Bon appetit. Cheers, good health. And yourself, man? There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Skal, as the Vikings would say. <laughs> Talk to us later. Almost probed myself with my knife. That's not good. It's never a good, never a good touch. No. I say I always just like it hanging around my neck. This is the same bit of old polyethylene rope that's been on this for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep thinking, oh, I should replace that with a nice bit of leather or something. And then I sort of think, oh. I often think that people who wear, value. wearing neck, neck knives is for self-defense only and you put killing people in the middle of the night. Well, there is that. <laughs> we don't talk about those things. No. <laughs> uh, no, I just find it convenient. I, I, I find if I if I have it on my belt or whatever, and I want to put it away, I, I'm, I'm having to kind of look. Yeah. Whereas no, it, here, is, it is handy. Whereas here, it's just in front of me. You know. The only thing is, is if you're doing other things, sometimes you've got to kind of flick it round or out of the way. But yeah, it's handy, and then it, it's like a comfort. You know where it is. You know? Always know where it is. Yeah. But I would go for the upside down version, you know, where you just straight down. Mm -hmm. I would worry about it all night. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose there's that as well, yeah. Mm. Most definitely. But it's like anything else, isn't it? It's just what you're used to. You get you get into a certain way of doing a thing and then and it works for you and you're comfortable. And, and why change it? It's not broke, yeah, don't fix that's it. it. Do you know? And then over the years, it's like anything, you just get like you get a workflow that that you kind of work out. Same as lighting a fire or anything, you know, you get a, oh, oh, that's that seat going. But you know, you get a, you get a wee workflow in place and, um, and it works and it's successful. And you can rely on it. You know. I know exactly what you mean. Because you see, you see with a lot of folk where things really go wrong for them, you know, is they, um, you know, like they're always trying new ways of doing things, which is good. But you never really get something down. You never really just get something absolute muscle memory sorted, you know. Yeah. And um, there's nothing. There's nothing as irritating as like being out and having trouble getting your fire lit, or you finding know. your coxa, which is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Involuntary noise. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes. It's an age thing. It definitely is an age thing, isn't it? Uh huh. <laughs> You know, I keep getting some of those Loch Ness flies in my whiskey. But as the man says, it's it's only fair you get to bite these things back. <laughs> Very true. But here, that was an epic dinner, mate. Absolutely epic. I enjoy that. Yeah. I enjoyed that myself. Big shout out, Mickey Blue Eyes. Yes. Those are two absolutely legendary sirloin steaks. Absolutely mm. delicious. Big, sitting here with big bellies full of beef. Uh -huh. <laughs> so Ben, cheers to you mate, I know you're biting at the bit but you have to have work commitments but you'll be out soon mate and uh, all we can say to you is learn how to feck and swim. <laughs> or don't fall out of the boat. Don't fall out of the boat, yeah, simple. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have a life jacket on anyway, you'll be, you'll be grand, you'll just be bobbing about for a while, until you're rescued. 
Yeah, yeah. We'll just tow you to shore. Uh, Juno might be a problem trying to keep him steady, but we'll get a bigger boat. <laughs> Always need a bigger boat. Uh, yeah, so sitting here reminiscing on Coney Island and Loch Ness, and there's a few other, well, a few, there's a couple of pitches behind us and to the side of us of wild campers who are obviously very responsible because we don't hear a mute out of them. We're probably noisier than they yeah, are. We're, we're the irritating people. We're the irritating ones. There's no uh, boom boom box or any other little kipper. Mm. That's how I said the last day we were here, like it was, or I was here, it was awful, you know. Them. Mm. But we're, Loud music, and people burning rubbish. Yeah, you don't, you don't yeah. need that sh crap. No. But with the the coming in of the autumn winter wild camping season, not only will the midges be gone, the flies be gone, the, the famous or infamous Loch Ness flies be gone, but we uh, we lose the cockwombles. <laughs> so essentially, you have the place to yourself. You know, it's just a short canoe trip out. About what, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, half an hour yeah. tops? Yeah, it was a wee bit longer today because of the headwind. But a bit of a headwind. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was pleasant. Yeah. It was a wee. Very, a, very wavy, yeah. Quite it was a, bit of, but a few waves, you know. It, was, it wasn't yeah. sketchy or anything out there, you know, but no, it was just. No. Yeah. wasn't uncomfortable either, you know, but you just had to watch just in case you got uh, a wave or two over the bow or in the sides, yeah. you know. Chris very skillfully navigated us into the, the headwind. The, to stop us being broadsided by the odd rogue wave. <laughs> no, it was a nice run over. It was beautiful nice. sunny day. Mm -hmm. really Absolutely nice. beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Me, the professional drone pilot, uh, I hit a rope swing and a tree. <laughs> but neither, which, water. neither which resulted in disaster. No. no. Got away with it. The Mavic lives to fight another day. Mm. I thought sure one was doing that. I don't think that recorded, you know, that there on that... Uh, Hopefully it's on the card. It's not on the Wii, the the app, but hopefully yeah. it, it wrote to the card. Well, I so guess some, of the, some nice shots of you yeah. paddling. Well, I guess, I guess if that's if people are watching it, it worked, and if people aren't watching it, it didn't work. That's a good point. Yeah. So you will see it, or you won't see it. Mm. Yeah, need to top up. Are you doing okay? Such a such a such an. Don't mind if I do, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Always good to keep your cocks so wet. It dries out too quick, you know, if it's between drinks, you know, you have to keep it keep topping oh, yeah, it up. Yeah. You know, it's keep important keep it. just for its longevity. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it didn't actually give you a tour around camp before our evening meal, but I will do in the morning. Chris is hammock and tarp. And a very comfortable looking setup it is too. But again, I'll show you this in the morning when we're doing brekkie. And uh, I'm in the smoky hut without minus the outbacker stove. Because uh, it's just a, a small hint of autumn, but it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still yeah, just yeah. in a, a t shirt, essentially, you know. Chris is feeling the age, he has to put a fleece on. Like I have to get the woolly jumper on now. <laughs> Just so it'll get a bit sweaty and stink you out and really piss you off. <laughs> yeah, it's a good spot and I would highly recommend it. I've seen people on YouTube uh, coming to this spot. Not that many, you know. Uh, certainly it's, it's my first time here. Uh, and I certainly will be back again. Absolutely love it. Yeah. It's a great spot. There's a lot of history to it. Ancient history as well, Neolithic history, uh, medieval history. And uh, more recent, sort of, well, say more recent, what, 17, 1800s history with various mm. folk. I think I can't remember who. Yeah, some royal the, connections here as well, you know. The, the National Trust, I think, on it now, so. Yeah. yeah. It's a good spot. It's a grammy spot. Yeah. You don't have to do, once you uh, land your canoe, there's no portage essentially involved. You, just, you can leave it tied up on the dock or you can. Uh, Bring it the short distance to the pitch here, mm. uh, which yeah, means we, we can glamp it up a bit without yeah. having to. You can, you can throw a stone from here to the water. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So we'll see how we go later. I might stick the GoPro up and uh, do the 
the trademark Starlabs. We'll see how it goes. It's pretty. I think it's pretty clear skies tonight. Yeah, it's a shame that moon set because it was ah, really beautiful. That was very quick. It was like a wee, just a wee winning tunial. present. Yeah. A wee, wee toenail. Beautiful. Just right over in the sunset. Yeah. Yeah, so hopefully, uh, well, if you've seen the drone footage, you'll know it worked. At this moment in time, I don't know if it has worked, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. Yeah. Ooh. So, yes, Ben. Learn how to swim, conquer your fear of the water. And this is a great spot, mate. Mm -hmm. And then down Loch Iron. And Loch Iron, especially, yes. Yeah. Island hopping, I mean, there's... Let me say there's, there's an island there for every day of the year, 360. There's certainly 350 plus oh, in the islands. In the upper Loch, eh? It's, um, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's like... It's like a... Lattice work, almost, you know, of like yeah. river and you know, island. Yeah, it's beautiful. And yes, you can get lost on the lock. You know, when we uh, were on the cruisers out there, or down there, uh, they give you this wee map, you know, and you follow the, mm. the wee marker beacon. All the navigation, yeah. It's quite so tricky to... You can still get to, you can still, and some mm -hmm. of them don't make sense, you know, especially yeah. when you head down towards Bell Turbot, you know, past Nan Island and south of Nan Island in the upper lock. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at the number, and you think you're, it's 33A. That's not 33A. It says 33 on the map, it's 54F. <laughs> Where the fuck's 54F? Oops, can't swear. Yeah. Where the feck is 54F, you know? Yeah. But yeah, good fun. Mm -hmm. But Chris there, he, he uh, parked up and paddled out to an uninhabited island, spent the night in his hammock. Yeah, he's had a right couple, couple of really nice nights. Yeah. And. Uh, Again, like everywhere, you know, if, if, if somewhere is kind of accessible, albeit by boat or whatever, and it's beautiful, well, like, other people are going to be mm. enjoying it too, you know. But, I, like, last night I, I, I arrived and I paddled out, and um, where I had been a couple of nights before, the, um, there was a load of people pitched and set up. And, and Were they sensible enough? Or? Okay, I mean, I, did, yeah. I hardly heard them all night, but I, I, I paddled on around the island and... Um, no Swedish backpackers? Not, no, no, no. no. Unfortunately for you. <laughs> yeah. So I paddled on right up the other side of the island and found a really, really nice spot. Yeah. Looking out through a couple of hazels at the sunset and the islands. Oh, it was absolutely exquisite. And, um, you know, apart from the odd, you know, just in the last of the light, there was like, you know, a few jet skis and things, but that's, mm -hmm. that's bound to happen. And then eventually it all just goes really quiet. You just hear the ducks laughing at you and the, the odd honk, the odd honk of, of um, swans, you know. And uh, the island has a lot of um, sheep on it. It's grazed, which is great because it um, it's all quite clear. Yeah. They keep it well grazed down, you know. So it's really it's really easy to find a nice pitch and whatever. And it's easy for me in the hammock because I'm not worried about what's on the ground. You know, it can be stony or anything. You know. It's amazing, really, what's on your doorstep. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't have to go to the Pyrenees. Or, OK, it's nice to go to these places and all the rest of it, but, I mean, yeah. on our own doorstep here, you know, it's uh -huh. some of the spots like are... You just have to look. I mean, this is the first time I've been on Coney Island. First time in Mahara. Not Mahara, what is it? Macri. 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 Yeah. yeah, and it's such a quaint little hamlet, almost, as you come in, you know, yeah. this little church, you know, overlooking the lock. We school and it's just yeah, yeah, nice yeah, it's about the height of it. Yeah, uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful, and a nice uh, canoe trip out. You know, great. Yeah. It would be awesome. An absolute flat cam, I'm sure. Like, you know, people who live in this area, overlooking the lock, will see the many moods of the lock. You know, yeah, through yeah. the seasons and whatnot. You know, the yeah. flat cams and then the yeah. the raging rough and then the, the wind and the waves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we can hear the. It's it's not blowing a hoolie now. It's it's quite calm, I suppose, but. Two or three hundred feet up, it's a wee bit windy, but you can hear, certainly hear the waves crashing against uh -huh. the shoreline, which we could throw a yeah. stick at and splash. Yeah. You know? I think people kind of forget, you know, with these these big inland waterways, you know, they sort of think that it was like a lake and it's quite calm or whatever, you know. But you have to think of them in the same way as you think of like the sea, as the open sea, you know, mm. because it's just as affected by the wind and and it can get really quite um Lock iron can get very very yeah. dodgy, sketchy sort of time times yeah. in bad weather. Mm -hmm. 
but that's a whole that's a whole new playground you know that uh, yeah future campouts you know which will inevitably in, involve a boat of some sort either a car or a canoe or whatever mm -hmm. but yeah it's just the access that gives you you know it just lets you just really exactly it just opens up a whole new world it's like anything it's like, like having a car or, you know yeah yeah all of a sudden you you, you know you, you get to like a different shop <laughs> further away or whatever <laughs> you know because you're not just walking or whatever but it's, it's the same the boat just gives you that lovely access and the, the freedom you know that's great it's a nice little kayak you got yourself yeah. i was surprised actually at the amount of, of gear it could actually yeah carry. well they, they rated it at 450 kilos but when you when you get up to that sort of level it gets very difficult to paddle and you know it doesn't have the same maneuverability and you know sitting so low in the water and then you're more susceptible then to maybe getting a bit swamped or yeah. so uh, it's finding that middle ground as i said i'll show you around camp in the morning properly uh i'm under a absolutely beautiful chestnut tree mm. and there's a carpet of chestnuts and then chris is under a, a sycamore a big oak a big oak side. tree with yeah. the uh Oak nuts. <laughs> Acorns. Acorns. <laughs> oak nuts. From little oak nuts. Yeah, Mighty oak trees grew. From little oak nuts. Big oak trees grew. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that's that's when they yes. Yeah. yeah. Trying to be fucking sensible sensible here, you know. Yeah. That's out the window, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because like, even while we've been here, every so often you hear like a thring on the tarp and it's an acorn falling. <laughs> it's, you an, know. it's an oak nut falling. <laughs> an oak nut, yeah. <laughs> an oak nut assault. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's as well you have the tarp up, you know, when you're nogging. That's it. You're woken up by hitting the eye. <laughs> hitting the eye with an acorn. Even my pitch with the smoky hut there has chestnuts in their, their shell. It's, 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 lovely, it's a lovely time of the year, you know, the chestnuts are falling off the trees and the uh -huh. oak nuts are, <laughs> are everywhere, you know. Yeah, I think we should have a game of Conkers in the morning. We will have a game of Conkers in the morning, so we've set it on video, so we'll have to do it, actually, you know. Mm -hmm. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Pretty badly, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So, we'll are you a big country and western fan, by any chance? I know you, you like uh, Johnny Cash, don't you? Johnny Cash fan, are you a Merle yeah. Haggard type person or what? Yeah, it would be a Merle, yeah, God rest him, yeah. But it's like, there's a whole, you know, kind of new wave of that music, you know, like um, Sturgill Simpson, and Jason, I know you have Jason a, Isbell. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a connection with a uh, local sort of a folk group, the Fires. Are they still going now or did they oh, disband? Oh, um, they packed it in a while back, but um, Stephen. I their CD, they were, they yeah, were great. Yeah, they really were good fun band, you know. Really good. Some good really times. Good. But um, Stephen now, who was uh, who did it, Stephen lot, McCartney, yeah, the singing. Yeah. You know, he's um, is he still singing? Or? He's still working away, doing really well. He runs under the moniker now of King Cedar, and he's releasing some really, really good music. Some like lyrically really intelligent, really you know, really really Bit good stuff, content, and, yeah. and just just really good quality. You know, because he's a musician. You know, he really he, and he understands and understands how it works. You know. I actually and thought, you know, when I first heard a, f a few of the, the tracks from, and I've seen them live, like the Farriers, I've seen them yeah. and the Helmsman and Bangor, uh, the time Bev and Sue were over, do you remember that there, we met up? Oh yes, yes. Uh, a couple of years ago now, uh, we actually went to see and um, they were playing in Helmsman or Woolsley's in Bangor, I can't mind, but absolutely. I said to myself, there, there's a band that's going places, you know. Uh -huh. They were on Radio Ulster as well, you know, they've been interviewed, you know. And yeah. But, I mean, some, some, of their, some of their tracks were just like, hauntingly beautiful, is the way I can describe uh -huh. it, you know, really, really. Yeah, there yeah. There was yeah. talent there, you know. Yeah, just really good, really good kind of writing team and all, you know. Yeah, surprised that they actually have. Mm -hmm. And like I say, Stephen's writing is just uh, uh, imp impeccable, you know. Yeah. It never ceases to amaze me. Yeah. Did I hear a boat at this time of the night? Yeah, yeah. They're probably coming here to get their... or somebody going down to meet them. So. I wouldn't have thought you were allowed to navigate at this time of the evening, but... Well, I you think you, you wouldn't be long, maybe crashing into one of those navigation yeah. markers. And that's a whole handling then. It certainly is. Do you know, there's, a, there's actually a, 
lock Coast Guard station just in, near Macquarie there. So right. you would think they would maybe kick up a stink, wouldn't you? Well, I don't know. maybe this right. I, I I don't know my navigation. I know in Locker. I'm not allowed to. I know, and, and not, well, certainly with the uh, the commercial hire cruisers, you're not allowed to navigate after nightfall. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, whether it's private owned, you can because you know you, they have navigation lights for a reason. You know, yeah, on the yeah. boats, you know the uh -huh. red on the left and the green on the right, and this, that, and the other, and yeah. the white on the bow. And but certainly, uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, I. Barking up the wrong tree, but certainly uh, I know for Lock Iron, it just they, you're not allowed to navigate. Ah, well, ev everything just shuts down and just dusk yeah. time there, you know. Yeah, you, 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 you mirror up, tie up, and you sit and chill, you know, until dawn. Because uh, <laughs> there was ones out in the lock very early this morning. Mm. You know, I didn't leave till a wee bit later now, you know, until about. Did you have the mist in the morning? I know this morning was quite um, clear enough. You know. It was very clear, and then during the night, then it clouded over quite a bit. And this morning, then I was woken up, really just at first light, with somebody like shooting. Must have been like wild or something, you know. Yeah. And That's uh, started duck season, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, you could hear them in the distance, you know, because you know, like the the echo of the gun sort of like goes right round the islands, you know. And then, I, then. You would hear him like hear somebody like the echoes of coming on as he's cursing and swearing at the dog. He's obviously been up doing his job. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking blind, you stupid old bollocks of a thing? Drop it, drop it, drop it, drop that fucking. Funny when I was out with my father on the the cruiser in Locker, and there it was the start of duck season, and I followed. They had a small uh, rowing boat with an engine. Rowing boat with an engine. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah it was a rowing boat with an engine in the back. Yeah, of yeah. It. And there's about six on it. <laughs> One of those long, long, long. Ah, yeah, you know, yeah. And they sort of dis it was a mist in the morning. They disappeared off into the mist, and it was like the last stand of the Alamo with a bang, 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 bang. bang. I followed them in the drone. Then I got lost in the mist, uh, you know, and I was panicking. I was just returned to home. <laughs> it just goes, <laughs> comes back. Ah, oh, handy. I can hear it. Oh, there it is. There, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I mean. Also, what crossed my mind too was the fact that they could end up getting the drone shot and said, "Oh, we thought it was a duck." Yeah, sort of right. Thing. Yeah, so we're sharing the island tonight with. Uh, I would call them responsible. Yeah, decent know. bunch. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a quite responsible bunch of um, campers, wild campers, like-minded souls. Like-minded souls. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see how like-minded they are in the heart of the winter, you know, when the the icicles are on the trees and it's ball frozen. And ball frozen? When it's Baltic? Yeah, when it would freeze the oak nuts off you. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when we go up. That's when we get out and play. When nobody, nobody else fears to tread. That doesn't make sense at all. Nobody else fears to tread. Except us. Except <laughs> us, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no doubt, folks, this conversation will go into the wee small hours, so I'll bid you, we'll bid you good night. Uh, so stay safe, look after each other, keep washing the hands, wearing the mask, and... Uh, don't be an asshole. Yeah, basically, don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in the morning. Good night. <laughs> good night, folks. Good morning, glampers. So I'll just show you around camp. 
that's where we were last night. So a raging fire was here, hammock here, smoky hut there. So it's always good to, to leave no trace. So we're going to, uh, the festivities of the evening has uh, curtailed the videoing of breakfast. We decided then before the breeze come in to, uh, before the sea actually, or for the sea before the lock, it's going to be rougher. We'll cut our losses and just head for shore. So Chris is packing up as we speak, distributing the weight. It's a good bit lighter after the consumption of alcohol and after those massive steaks that we had last night were oh, epic. But yeah, a good spot. Definitely come back here. Uh, I'm going to give Chris a hand here. Yeah, highly recommend it, little place. Great spot. So, Chris is distributing the weight for a pleasant passage to the mainland. Three flight checks complete. <laughs> 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 so, that's another one over. Catches on the next one. All the best. Look after each other. Look after yourselves. Take care.